All right, I think we're live now. If you guys are here, let us know in the comment section oh, below. I'll check my phone. Oh, yeah. It, it'll say, like, oh, he's live. So, uh, welcome to another episode of, was it, Portraits, Pizza, and Photography. And there's no format to this show. We're just going to be talking about photography. We do have a topic in mind while I eat pizza. You know, I'll let Eli introduce himself as well as, you know, um, talk a little about, about what we're going to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, here's Eli Fonte. He's been on this thing before yeah. but second um, time second time but now we're a little bit more professional today right yeah I, I finally got my own episode the first episode didn't even have portraits pizza photography but thankfully joy invited me again um <laughs> so what was i gonna mention oh i finally got my youtube channel last episode joy was like on me he was he embarrassed me in front of everybody <laughs> he said push this guy to be on youtube so um, my youtube channel is out it's eli infante i got one video pretty cool I move my hands a lot I'm sorry but I'm gonna improve that but other than that it's, it's good uh, we got a cool topic today so we're gonna have a good debate today yeah we're, we're gonna talk about um, of course you guys are seeing in the title of the video we're gonna be talking about the upcoming Canon and Nikon camera or Canon and Nikon mirrorless cameras that are gonna be coming up um, and I'm really excited well, about that well, we're gonna what I want to do is I want to do our predictions and then what's uh, gonna be cool is we're gonna see who was right and who was wrong when they finally get announced because I would love that. if you haven't been paying attention there's been a lot of rumors surfacing within the past two days with Nikon about their two cameras and you know Canon is gonna be coming up with their cameras rumors pretty soon so these cameras are gonna be announced I'm sure within the next couple of yeah. month or two maybe three I don't know but for sure this year yeah I know I, I'm really excited because I don't know if you guys are in the same boat but I love technology overall I just love new, when new stuff happens who's innovating and uh, you know just stuff like that who's on who's on the ball and also to kind of see who's like not on the ball who's lacking and I don't watch sports whatsoever so technology the technology <laughs> industry is like my sports I'm like rooting for you know I'm wondering who's gonna do what and what plays are gonna be played out. I don't know I don't know sports but right no I know what you mean I know what you mean yeah Okay, so it looks like we are, are we live? Yeah, we're, we're live. Got, we got like 19 Thank people. you guys for um, tuning in. If you guys know anybody else who might want to be interested, you know, if you know anybody else who might be like an expert in this field or knows a lot, let, you know, invite them to watch the live stream and ask us questions or just start a dialogue with us because that's why we're doing this podcast because both Eli and myself had like a little bit differing opinions on this subject. So that's why I invited him specifically on again so i'm really excited to see what's uh what's gonna happen in this the mirrorless world we might end up fighting in front of <laughs> all of my pizza yeah. and burn them. no 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 but um as we're waiting for people um i guess joe you want to talk about maybe some recent shoots that you've done yeah um guys if you guys didn't ch uh, see this already but i did a, a workshop a, a photo walk over in uh, new york recently and that was really really fun i actually I'm hoping to finish this video on, I uh, actually recorded a video at my photo walks. Um, so that's something that's I'm really looking forward to because it was, I was really enjoying all the shots that were being taken. Specifically, yeah, there's a, that's a that's BTS. The BTS right there, it's so cool. Yeah, it's a BTS of, of one of the shots that we took, but uh, I wish I could do it all over again because I, I let my, um, the people that attended the photo walk sh take a lot of photos and that was something that was really cool. See, like they were showing me the, the photos on the back of their camera and they were like really beautiful. Like I loved their shots. And and then I go back to my camera and I'm saying, I'm like, oh, I didn't take a lot, but I, I did get enough for a video right. and I love the shots. So, so let, me, let me ask you this, yeah. how many people showed up to the photo walk? Well, like, I, like group wise. I, I initially had both photo walks capped at eight people. Which is I didn't, good. Yeah, which I didn't good. want a lot of people, but then, yeah. I, but then I increased it because the people were asking me. So right. I had one in the day and one in the night. Right. Or night. I, I, I was hoping for it to be a lot more night, but it was the it, summer, so it was more day. Yeah. Um, but it was, it was a good turnout. All the people that joined in, um, thank you for joining on that walk. Um, you guys will see yourselves in the BTS okay. video coming very soon. Yeah, actually, yeah. I saw a lot of the pictures already on your Learn to Lie group, which is really cool. Uh, like, I, there, oh, there was, yeah, there was some right. really awesome ones. There was one against the wall. Uh, um, I remember you did like an Instagram story, so that was really cool. Yeah, I and so that. yeah. Really awesome stuff. So we got yeah. about 32 people. Wow, we got a lot of people already coming in. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, like I said before, guys, if you guys know people who are really, you know, on the ball with the, the mirrorless stuff, or if you have anybody, if you, if you have any insert info, go ahead and let it all out. Be, you know, vet with us. Right, you know what, guys? You know what you can do, too, is you can also, in the comments, 
give us your predictions on what do you think yeah. Nikon and Canon or give us questions because we're just gonna this is just a fun talk we're just gonna be yeah. making fun predictions we might be way off we might be accurate but it's just kind of like all of us can kind of participate in this discussion what do you think Nikon's gonna do full frame what do you think Canon's gonna um, release what do you think the specs are going to look like? Do you think Canon is going to offer 4K? And is it going to be legit 4K? <laughs> or is it going to be one of those like lame 4Ks? You know, and you know, kind of see what you guys think. I don't know. That's what this topic is going to be about. Yeah, I do want to hear you guys' predictions. So um, usually when we use hashtags in the, in the live chat, it's a little bit more organized. So if you can just use the hashtag, um, I don't know, something short, uh, CK. <laughs> Hashtag CK, Canon Nikon, I guess. Oh, and okay. Yeah, yeah so yeah, you... Yeah, wait, CK, Canon Nikon. Can, wait, oh, Canon Nikon. Wait, Nikon oh, starts with oh, the CN. <laughs> CN, guys. Use the hashtag CN, and then so that we can pick it up a little easier and see exactly, you know, what you guys think. Uh, I do, like I said, like Eli said before, we do have our opinions on that. And, you know, um, um, I actually did do, like, a little bit of research prior to this because I was like okay I know I think I know a little bit about this subject you know I know that one of the things that I keep hearing is that uh, Canon and Nikon I think it's Canon yeah Canon that they're gonna release two cameras but one's gonna be like 3,000 and the other's gonna be 4,000 or is that Nikon? That's Nikon. That's, That's Nikon. Nikon. Nikon's rumored to just got um, well hold on we'll save, we'll, save that stuff. Yeah. we'll save that stuff in a little bit. Yeah, I'm gonna We're gonna wait maybe like five more minutes we got 39 people which is awesome we're gonna wait about five more minutes until we get into all this discussion. Once again, start leaving questions or your thoughts on what you think these uh, brands are gonna do. Oh, um, Ryan, yeah. Ryan White. Are you the same Ryan that I spoke to recently? Cause like that's not, it's a common-ish name, but not too common. But um, thank you guys for tuning in to Chris, to Jeff, to, to Michael, to Victor, to everybody that are tuning in. Um, we do want to keep this uh, topic fun because it can be something that's very controversial, and that's why I, I asked Eli specifically because we both like to kid around a little bit, but we know exactly that we're we're just having fun. Uh, so yeah, and he used to be. I did, did, did you just fully switch to? Yeah, I'm uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So, so, um, yeah, so I've uh, I've been. You get my camera. Spoiler alert. I've Spoiler. been using Sony now for, let me see, when did the camera get released? Because I know I got announced at WPPI. A7 III? A7 III, because that's what I have. When did it get released? I should know this. Uh-oh. Dun, dun, dun. Mar so Sony's watching right March. now. March. March. <laughs> you guys know it came out this year. <laughs> Anyways, it came out like a couple of months ago, right? The Sony. I've been using it. I'll admit the first time I was, I had it, I hated of it. Of course. Um, the reason why I hated it was because the MC11, I didn't update it. March 10th. And mm -hmm. I autofocus was horrible. The menu system was very, very complicated. Yeah, you did notice a big sh like increase when you updated it? Yeah. yeah. And I had a big headache. There was just so many different options and so many things I was just used to with Canon. And I would always leave my Sony in the bag. And then I eventually got used to it. Big shout out to Jason Vong. I, I would watch him, that one camera Jason guy. Jason Vong. And they, they, those big guys camera. were a big, big help. I mean, he has some great tutorials on YouTube. And he helped me kind of set up my camera. Um, but anyways, now that I'm used to it, it, it's hard to go back to my Canon. I mean, my, yeah. like with the eye autofocus now, um, and then if I go natural light with the electronic viewfinder, it's, I, I think I've finally made the full-time switch to Sony. I just did a client shoot. So for a while, I was doing client shoots and I was still choosing my Canon over Sony. I still wasn't confident enough with Sony. Yeah. And I was like, I, I don't want to do it because I don't want to mess it up. Yeah, so I, I, did I really want him to like just like put the can of stuff away so he can focus because there is that learning curve. Yeah. But you got there. Uh -huh. and, and so I did my first client shoot yesterday. I took my Canon because I was kind of scared again because I was like, <laughs> oh, let me just have my Canon because it's like my, my safety net. I already know how to use the camera. I know how to get the shots. Um, and I actually did the whole entire shoot with my Sony. I was tempted to use my Canon, but then I saw how bulky it was, and then I was like, oh, there's not gonna be any eye autofocus, so I might miss focus. I'm like, nah, and I just left it in the bag. And so right now, I'm really happy with the Sony. I'm curious to see what Canon, that doesn't mean I'm gonna give up on Canon. Um, I still use Canon because I'm a teacher. My students use Canon. That's all the stuff, the gear we have. Uh, I still love Canon. Uh, all my lenses are still Canon as well. Yeah. So uh, we'll get more into discussion on if I'm going to upgrade these lenses to Sony or just stick with Canon. But we'll get into that in a little bit. But yeah, Sony, it's, it's, been, uh, it's been good to me, man, within the past uh, couple of months. I'm loving it. Yeah. I, I'm i sorry, guys. I'm posting about this video or about the live stream so we can get a little bit more people in here. Um, but I am paying attention, of course. 
Um, but yeah, like Eli said, that you know, there that canon that can that's what I think I heard. Um, that guy that you just told me to watch that he had that same mindset where he knows the in and outs of canon. And actually, you know what? Tony and Chelsea Northrop they did a video talking about the mirrorless cameras that are kind of coming up, and um, they mentioned that they 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 said that. Uh, well, specifically Tony, because he was talking about how you can rely on Canon to work and do what it's supposed to do, yes. mm-hmm. and you know you can buy a camera and then go ahead and start shooting with it. And I, I, I can't, I can't disagree with it. That's true, um, but there's that 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 little bit of effort that you're gonna have to have um, when it comes to learning Sony. It's just it's just gonna pay off immediately. Like why not necessarily immediately? Because there's a little bit of that learning curve, like I mentioned. Right. But I think it's worth yes. worth learning. And, so. and I think that that's one thing that people need to understand if you buy Sony is that you're, it's not going to be one of those cameras that you buy out of the box and you like you know what you're doing. You, you definitely need to watch those videos on YouTube that are like about 40 minutes long that show you how to set it up. Because yeah. there's so many different Jason ways. Jason Vong. Yeah, Jason Vong. Like, so many different ways to focus. There's the zone focusing, which I love, by the way, for focusing for video. And then there's the wide. Then there's a spot. Then there's a center. And so th- there's so many different things that you can do that you really, really uh, need to spend a good day or two just watching YouTube videos and setting up your camera. Even the, 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 the S-Log prof- profiles. Have you set up any of that stuff, John? I honestly, guys, I, I, I do want to eventually learn the S-Log profiles and stuff to get that better dynamic range for video. But at this point, I'm more just documenting because I have like so many photos that I like to... I take more, um, more time to edit my photos and then for video, I'm just like, eh, it looks good. It looks good. I, mean, I could just use a phone and sometimes I'm like, eh, it's yeah. good. But I do want to get better, so it will stay with I did mess around with the S-Log profiles. There's a, a YouTuber named Henbu, H-E-N-B-U. Oh, yeah. Really, really awesome. He's very similar to Jason Vong, but he does more cinematic videos and stuff like that. Uh, so anyways, I, he had a video on how to set up your S-Log profile for nighttime, which was really, really cool. And I, I set oh, it up yeah. and, and I hadn't really experimented with it, right? And so Jeff, who was on the second episode of this uh, podcast, uh, I think it was two days ago, he invited me to go do a music video. And he, I did all the video work with the a7 III using that S-Log2 profile. And it's really, really cool because it, it came out really, really flat, like the contrast and the colors, because that's what you're, you're going for, because the purpose of that is that you can color grade later in post. Mm-hmm. And so Jeff, he was telling me yesterday, because he was assisting me on my client shoot, that the footage came out awesome, the color grading, everything was coming out great. He actually might release that music video tonight. I think I saw him on Instagram. He was uh, uh, exporting it. Wait, what, are you, what, are you, what was he using? So he was using, well, I was, okay, so he's in a band called the Palantines. He was, we were doing a music video. So he, he wanted me to go and record all the, vi- the footage for him. Oh, so okay. I used the a7 III, we shot in 4K. We used the S-Log profile, which was meant for kind of nighttime stuff because we, we were in a dim room and that was the purpose of the, like, his idea. Yeah. And so he's going to release that video probably tonight. Oh, nice. So if you're kind of curious to yeah, see yeah, what 4K curious. looks like with the S-Log. Now, depending on how Jeff also color graded, that, that's going to play into... <laughs> he just sent you the video to check it out. What? We'll check Where it out he? after. We'll check it out. Oh, oh. yeah. He, oh, yeah, yeah. He just <laughs> literally sent it to me. Cool. Um, so I'm looking forward question. to that. Yeah, you got some questions. Said, Eli, what's the biggest adjustment factor you face after shooting Sony? The biggest adjustment factor? It, that's a great question. It would, I would say when you're shooting with Canon you are kind of used to just seeing it naturally, like exposure-wise, because there's no electronic viewfinder. It took me a while to kind of get used to, when you put up the, the Sony, the exposure is gonna look different to what your eyes see. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So when, you're, you're, when you have your Canon, because it doesn't have an electronic viewfinder, you're basically seeing what your natural eyes see. When you go up to the Sony, it took me a while, I was like, oh my gosh, it's already dark. And I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, duh, because <laughs> I need to adjust it, you fine. know what I mean? So that part took, like it was a psychological thing. It took me a while. And like I was saying earlier, just the, the muscle memory with where the buttons are at, because like the, when I, the way I change my shutter speed, I think I have it back here, mm-hmm. which is a little different than the Canon. Uh, there's a lot of custom buttons on the Sony, which is great, but it's also confusing because you got to remember what C1 does, C2 and C3 and four. And once you kind of get used to all that stuff, it's really, really awesome. Um, so I would say that was the biggest change for me was that that whole going from a 
uh, a normal viewfinder to an electronic viewfinder. Like yeah. my, my brain kind of shut down. I was like, what the hell but is going it, on here? Is it a good change? No, it's, it's a good change. Yeah. Like okay. once you train your brain to, to have that electronic viewfinder, because it helps out so much with natural light, dude. It saves so much time. Because oh, like, yeah, it's like cheating. With, 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 yeah, it is cheating. It's because like like cheating. with Canon, I don't mean to bash Canon. I love Canon. Once again, I want to, I want to just emphasize facts that. Facts here, okay. It's just that with Canon, I'm gonna have to like slow down, get my light meter set up, right? And I'm kind of guess. Now, but the thing is, is like when you shoot natural light, I like to expose for my highlights, okay. except for like meaning I'm, I'm exposing for my background. The person will be underexposed, maybe by one stop. Um, and so with Canon, it's a little bit more confusing because it's like, am I really like metering towards the background? Here, I can actually see it. Yeah, and I can adjust for it really, really quick, and I save a lot of time. Yeah, guys, just if you don't, if you haven't used Sony, before, I don't mean to make this a Sony. I don't mean to go off topic, but honestly, it's it's worth using at least once. And somebody mentioned about having soft video with um, 4K or for sure, with the with, with the Sony cameras that they're using. But honestly, I, I I noticed how crunchy and not smooth my Canon 60s video was before, and then when I shot with the A6500, it was a lot clearer. Um, that, that's one of the things so, that yeah. Jeff mentioned when he was editing. Yeah. That, like the footage looked a lot more crisp, it looked a lot yeah. cleaner and stuff. Yeah, I, I think according to the video that I saw earlier from Tony and Chelsea Northrup, I think Tony mentioned that um, I don't think that Canon's cameras, if they have 4K, like the like the 5D Mark IV, I believe, um, they don't have that oversampling. Mm -hmm. Which, if you guys don't know what that means, is basically with the A6500 and I believe the A7 III and A7R three, they take more data than the 4,000 or whatever megapixel or pixels for the video, they take more data and then they condense it smaller so that video becomes extra crispy and smooth or just so much detail and that's the thing I actually loved and of course if you don't like extra detail then just soften the video or something and post but um yeah okay so so we've already been on for like 60 minutes we yep. got 58 people I think it's a good time yeah. <laughs> to start doing our predictions once again if you're just joined in the whole purpose of this episode is predicting what Nikon and Canon are going to do with their mirrorless. If you want to join in on the fun, you can leave a comment and predict what you think Canon will release and what Nikon will release. Okay? Yeah. Okay. So, so let's start off with Nikon. So if you haven't been up to date with the news, yeah. mm. there's been a lot of rumors with Nikon with their two mirrorless cameras. Okay? They, they're going to so release they have two these soon, right? Yeah. Well. They're going to announce them. Announce them. I don't know about the release date, but they're yeah. going to announce them soon. So what it seems like what they're going to do is they're going to have two models. One's going to compete from what I'm seeing with the a7 III, a lower kind of megapixel camera. And they're going to have a higher end one, which is going to compete with the a7R III. Okay, I'm going to jump in real quick because he, he he is stating the truth here that they, they're aiming for like to compete with the a7 III. But in one way that they're not going to compete that I'm pretty sure about this is that they're not going to compete in press. Because I feel like Canon, and I think Tony Northrup also mentioned this as well, that like they're going to aim to compete with these cameras, but when it comes to price, it's going to be around $3,000. You know, like if you're going to have a Sony oh, a7 III equivalent but with Canon, and it's $1,000 more, that's that's where it's like really struggling to like, do I want to continue with this? or And, and adapters too, that's, another, that's a whole other issue as yeah. well. Okay, but, so... Um, yeah. Okay, so like, so you, what you're saying right now, from my understanding, the A7R th or the A7 III costs about two thousand bucks, right? Yeah. So what you're saying is Nikon, their camera is gonna be through two thousand five hundred, three thousand dollars. You're saying it's gonna be like a thousand dollars, five hundred dollars? Really? I, think, I, I think don't it, think so. I think it's gonna be expensive, like pricey. Mm -mm. I don't think so. I think that they're gonna if they're gonna go higher, I say at least five hundred dollars more. I, I think that that's that would be very dumb of them to go a thousand dollars because to me that makes no sense. So then, what yeah. would why would people want to buy your camera if it's a thousand dollars more? Because I can guarantee you this: their video will not be on par with Sony because Nikon. I've never ever heard anything good video yeah, wise right. from Nikon. Yeah, we actually, like their autofocus is terrible. We from my that, like, from my um, I didn't mention to. to I mentioned that to you like the other day because I was like, okay. I don't think I've ever heard anything good about like Nikon's video. Right. So you're right about that. Maybe it'll surprise us. Yeah. So that, that's what, okay. I was gonna get to yeah. that. So like, that, that's that's what I'm saying. So like, if you're gonna go a thousand dollars more, that means you're telling me your video better be badass. <laughs> right now, Nikon does not have that track record of having badass video. So if you're gonna go a thousand dollars more, to me, it's not gonna be worth it. Just for photos, I, I'm not gonna like if I'm a Nikon person, I'm not gonna go to to Nikon or if I'm a I don't know if I phrased that right. I kind of got confused there. Like, in other words, if 
I'm trying to buy a mirrorless. I'm not going to go Nikon if it's a thousand dollars more and then the video sucks. Yeah. Because one of the best things about Sony is that it does great video and it does great photos. Yep. You're getting a two for one. Yep. And so where Canon and Nikon have been slacking is that they're only really offering one really good service right now and that's just photos. Canon, it's kind of like, it's, it's still good. I shouldn't say yeah. it's, it's not horrible, the, but the it's still not on par. Yeah, the video, what were you going to say? Like photo good, video not as good? So for, for Canon? Yeah. Well, the dual pixel autofocus, I've heard oh, fantastic right, things about right. that. But what, the thing with, with Canon, it does great video. It's just they're not offering 4K yet. They're not offering, you know, the 120 frames per second yeah. at 1080p. And so they're lacking a lot of the features that people people really really want. Yeah. And that's what that's where they're hurting. Yeah. They already do great video. I see a lot of YouTubers using Canon and it yeah. looks fantastic. Dual, dual pixel autofocus is something I always hear about and I've heard people who do video that I, I really like value their opinion. They say that nothing beats the dual pixel autofocus and I'm like really? Like I want I want to I want to at least see that and and I could go ahead and see like YouTube tutorial reviews or something like that, but I just want to see it in person. You know what? I, I'll, I kind of, I feel, like, I, feel, I feel like autofocus is kind of like overrated. Like Sony's is good. Like I've yeah. never had any issues. You're like right, you're like right. if, if Canon's is, is, let's say Canon's is focus is better. It's not like, oh my gosh, like I'm going to like completely switch because the autofocus is perfect. I think a lot of it, if people complain about Sony, which I've seen and you can agree with me on this, is that a lot of people try Sony that go from Canon to Sony, but they just don't know how to use the Sony well enough. You're right. Like yeah. turn on face detection yeah, or zone of, focusing. There's a lot of different there's things. There's so much, guys. There is. There's so much features that, like, sometimes I discover something I'm like, oh, okay, that that really helps me out. So you really have to take advantage of the YouTube community, see Jason Vong's tutorials, and just see exactly how to make the best out of the camera. Because honestly, I believe, and it's not to say anything's bad about anybody, but um, there's a lot of user error out there. So like you might have a great camera and not utilize all the functions that it has that will really help you out and give you the best quality that you can get. But that part where you don't know exactly how to do that, that's gonna kind of shoot yourself in the foot. So definitely try to learn the camera and so, and you'll get like really great video. Okay, going back to Nikon. Okay. okay. So <laughs> but somebody you, 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 you're, you're saying that the price is gonna be $3,000 more. Okay, so forget about price now. All right. Let's talk about specs. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Nikon video. Do you think that the video they are gonna step it up? Like they're gonna be on par with Canon and Sony with this new system? That they're gonna fix that? They're gonna address the issue? Their autofocus is gonna be there, and now it's gonna be on par. Do you think Nikon is gonna get on par now with mirrorless? I think that since it is gonna be their first mirrorless cameras, that they'll have a video that is, you can say it's on par. I think I would be a, like a just a step back like it's gonna be close there but just just that little bit of that step forward or step back in quality like just not as good as Sony or Canon's video well I'm gonna talk about Sony because I know Sony more <laughs> but it's not gonna be as good as that okay. and if they have if they have to go ahead and offer something like that in terms of video I feel like it's it's like gonna turn people away from sticking with so with Nikon okay. because it's like why are you coming out with something that's not at least up to par because they they did a good job with the d850 mm -hmm. really seen it like close okay. to kind of go against like the a7r3 i think actually the d850 came out d850 f first yeah so like they, they did a good job of keeping up to par with that in photo mm -hmm. but video i'm not sure i'm well i'm, I'm hoping for well for they, they had good video specs if i'm not mistaken yeah. they did it does 4k and i think it did 120 frames per second so when you say video what I, let me ask you this what about the autofocus on the nikon do you think it's going to be good? Is it going to be touch screen? We're going to be able to get like, you know, focus how I, we want? Honestly, no. You don't think I, so? I don't think so. I, I'm, I'd be happy to be wrong, but I'm honestly thinking that Nikon is just not going to be there yet. Because they honestly have to blow Canon and like Canon and Sony users out of the water. That's in my opinion. Because right now they have a, a lens mount. Okay. You know, I do want to talk about adapters in a second. Yes, yes, But yes. they have a, the, the lens mount, the F mount, whatever. And it's, it's going to be hard to adapt to these new cameras because these new cameras are going to have to use adapters. Right. So, so uh, I hate to cut so. you off here. So right now, the current lens lineup, from what I've heard from friends, that the Nikon cameras suck at autofocus, right? It's horrible, right? So if you're going to use adapters on this new mirrorless system and it's the same thing, you know what I mean? Is that, yeah. That's obviously going to be an issue. So what I'm wondering is their new mirrorless lenses. 
is that going to fix the issue with the video and is that where they're going to step it up? Yeah, I want to ask, ask everybody there, like, what do you think about both camera systems? Do you think that when they release these new mirrorless cameras, they're going to release like a... They, I mean, they can't release like one or two new lenses that are dedicated to this. I want to say they have to at least minimum like three new lenses for each of these cameras uh, to kind of at least have somewhere to start off. Not, not just one camera or at least and actually something i heard about adapters is that okay. they they're going to be really pricey like somewhere like 300 well, i heard somewhere 1200 uh, no, I was like, no 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 like, because uh, I, I was looking earlier on amazon looking at the the because canon already has a mirrorless camera the yeah. m50 right is mm -hmm. that the newest uh, one or the m5 but the m50 is a new m50 one. is a new yeah. one, right they have an adapter it's only 50 dollars it's i mean really? uh, yeah because mm -hmm. like, like when, when you buy the camera it, it, you can add the adapter for additional 50 bucks, which really isn't that bad considering, and I don't want to talk, I don't want to, I have a lot to say about that in a little bit, but right now we're talking about Nikon. I'll talk about that mm -hmm. in a moment about Canon because I have a good, good right, discussion right. for that. And then I'm going to kind of see if we battle it out right now. So, <laughs> wait, well, I wanted to make this point real quick before I forget that with these two new cameras that Nikon and Canon are both going to release, it's kind of like a lot of people are saying, okay, well, it's their first toe in the water when it comes to, to mirrorless, but it's actually not. Like the Canon has their, their mirrorless cameras right M5 now. M5 and M50. Yeah, those cameras. And then also Nikon, I kind of remember, like it wasn't even that dramatic in the industry to, for me to remember, because I, I do try to keep a good knowledge base of everything yeah. that goes on. But they had, I'm pretty positive they, they had. They did, and I think, had I, think, mirrors, I, think right? they, I think they just disbanded, right? I remember that, it was a long yeah, time ago. Yeah, they had one, and then, and then they, they like, just, whoop, it went away. Goodbye, so, so yeah. I mean, okay. So let's kind of wrap it up with yeah. Nikon real quick. Right. So we, you're, you're saying, so I say that if at the most, it'll be about $500 more than Sony. You're saying it's going to be a lot more. So it'll be about $1,000 more, right? Yeah, I'm saying something like a, like. Um, a, like do you a, think they're going to have 4K video? They, and like like legit 4K, not like those, like that lower sampled stuff, like actual 4K. I think they're going to have not over sampled 4K. I would love to be wrong again, but I think it's going to have 4K, but probably gonna have a bad codec oh dang oh thank you cgm zmm i think i was speaking to you on <laughs> somewhere on instagram thank you so much this, that's practically the pizza right now domino's is 50 percent off right now in case you guys <laughs> were hungry while you're watching this but thank you so much um go ahead and join the discussion let you know let your voice be heard um where are we going at Okay, so you were talking about 4K. You were saying that it's not yeah, going to okay. be like legit. Like again, with both camera systems, but if we're going to you know narrow the opinion on just one. Uh, I think that Nikon is going to disappoint people in the the video aspect because um, it's honestly just their first. Like again, we we're talking about how we don't hear about Nikon having a good video autofocus or just video at all. Mm -hmm. So I honestly think they'll probably be at 4K maybe, but it won't be oversampled. And the video is going to be something that's disappointing. Okay. Yeah. So now, what about S log? Like, cause you know how like Canon yeah. has C log, yeah, S log. Do you, do you think they're going to have something like that? Because that, that's what I mean. If you're going to do video, that's what people crave and that's what people want. It's almost yeah. like shooting in raw for video. You're right. Mm -hmm. um, another thing too, guys. I know we've been talking a lot about video. There's probably a lot of you guys that are probably like, I don't really care yeah, about video. I don't care. And then so that that might be perfect for you. But right now, there's a lot of people that want to have both of those features. That's why we're kind of emphasizing yeah, yeah. it. By the way, if you're the kind of person that just loves photos, then I think yeah, Nikon no, no, will hit a home run. Sure. Nikon will hit. A, if you're just looking for Nikon and photos, I think they'll hit a home run. I think it'll be great. I think it'll work fine for photos. But for video is where I'm scared. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm hoping that they come up with something that's pretty good. But that's not something that you want to expect from some, from a company that. Like if I, for example, if I was shooting Nikon right now, I wouldn't be like, oh, I hope it's just as good as this other com company. I hope it's just as good in this area of video, for example, as this other company. I would just go ahead and make the effort to switch to that other company that's doing already amazing. So that's that's honestly, like I know I don't want to keep it like only Sony's focused, but my whole reason for joining uh, Sony for for um, for shooting Sony and switching to Sony is my, my disappointment with Canon and just seeing where the, the industry was going and I was like okay I love the eye autofocus and some of the other features and that's mm -hmm. that's just why I, I switched to that because I like I like the innovation that was happening so I'm really hoping for the innovation to happen with Nikon and Canon users but I'm not sure I, 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 I just need to see it I have a good question for you one of the things that I've completely forgot to talk about Nikon we're gonna wrap up this Nikon and we're gonna move to Canon a little bit 
But we've been talking a lot about video for Nikon. Photo-wise, do you think it's going to have eye autofocus for Nikon? The electronic viewfinder, do you think the electronic viewfinder is going to be good? Do you think it's going to be touchscreen? That's a tough one. Mm. Because if you go mirrorless, you gotta have eye out of focus. Because Canon, they, they Canon need it. Yeah. by the way, Canon already does it. It has face detection on the M5 and it has eye auto focus. So you know for sure that the yeah. full frame will have it. Okay. Nikon yeah, has never right. done it. So that's a because we've been talking a lot about video, but okay. photos wise. So one thing that I heard from one thing I heard was a little bit of a conspiracy for both camera systems is that they were holding back. They're holding back for their mirrorless systems, cameras. Right, yeah, right, right. And then once the cameras come out. They're going to be like loaded with amazing features. But at that same point, I love my Sony cameras and they have great auto, you know, features already. Okay. So in my head, if I was a Sony shooter and, or some, for example, I shot Canon and I kind of just switched and then these new cameras come out and they're just amazing. You know, they have, they have to be amazing. They just have to, they honestly do because if they're lackluster or just up to par, then it, I don't see a lot of people switching to that because at the rate that Canon's or Nikon is Sony, the, at the rate Sony is going, it's just a lot of new uh, new things coming out, and then you know people look forward to this innovation. I mean, I might be speaking from my, my own bias, I like my opinion. Like, okay, go for it. I made a pizza. So, like, one of the things about Sony that's kind of bothered me is that what a lot of people are going to Sony. It's not because yes, Sony is great and Sony is amazing and they do release great cameras. But the main reason people are switching is that it's Nikon and Canon's fault. Had they already released a, a product mm -hmm. with, that offered the features that Sony has, people would be sticking with Canon and Nikon. So it's, can, it's, it's, the, it's the lack of Canon and Nikon getting their stuff together and offering something. Because the moment, let's say hypothetically, hypothetically yeah. Canon releases a camera exactly like the a7 III. It has eye autofocus, it has great video, they actually put C-Log in there, they actually have legit 4K, they have the 120 frames per second. Now, Sony can't really brag about all the features that they have, because now Canon's on par, a lot of people can be like, hey man, now I can go make my switch to Canon. Because that's been the biggest thing, is that Canon has completely refused to offer the same things oh. that Sony has. That and the moment that they do, now we're gonna see, because Canon is still, like a, the top dog in the photo industry. Everybody knows Canon. You know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a teacher and a lot of my students, when they're buying yeah. cameras, Somebody recognize your shit. <laughs> uh, when people uh, buy cameras, like I, I was volunteering at a, at, a, at a competition for little kids at, at all ages. Everybody still has Canon and everybody still has Nikon, okay? Yeah. So I think that this is, this is like, um, just because Canon is going late and Nikon into the mirrorless, doesn't mean that they can't catch up. I was reading the comments, people are like, oh, they're too late. Guys, you have to understand, it's not about how you start the race. Can or Sony has started the race and boom, they're like way ahead. The race isn't over yet because the race hasn't even started because Canon and Nikon haven't even announced their stuff, okay? Right now it's real easy for everybody from Sony to be like, yeah, we got all this stuff. <laughs> it's because Canon and, and Nikon have refused to even offer anything. So yeah, the race right. isn't yeah. over right okay. now. Sony's like up ahead. Canon's gonna announce their stuff and then we're gonna see where this goes. So I have, my opinion on that <laughs> is that I agree with that. I do agree with that, like the race is not over, but I feel at this point, they already finished the, the, the crossing line. They already finished that line. I think the a7R3 and the a7 III are amazing cameras yes, already. That, so like, that's, that's they're, they're great cameras where people can get it and have great features in both photo and video and pretty good autofocus speeds, not like, amazing stuff like I hear from dual auto, dual pixel autofocus. I don't okay. know that to that extent how good it is. I have another good rebuttal but like, right now. Wait, real quick. <laughs> so, so like Nikon and Canon, they're like, they're going and going and I feel like they're gonna get to that finish line as well. But then I feel when that happens, Sony's gonna be starting another race already. Like they're gonna be already on their second lap from, and then Canon and Nikon are, are finally gonna do the first lap. So I, I, you know what, real one thing that before I forget, is that the A7S III, I have no idea about it, I don't have insider information about it, but supposedly that camera is going to be coming out soon, sometime, I don't know, the next couple of months as well. So, you know, next thing you know, Canon and Nikon release their camera, and then Sony is like, releases it that same afternoon or something, and just blows those two cameras out of the water. True. I'm just, I'm just excited about technology I, in, in general. 
I, I guess because you're right. Sony is <laughs> obviously they release a lot of cameras very very quickly, but it, it's getting to the point where there's only so much you can offer now. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, they yeah they might offer like is there even 6K now in video? I don't mm -hmm. even know. Okay. Mm -hmm. They might offer that, but that, that's like. 4K right now, is, it's not even the standard in video. Like A lot of people are not even using 4K. It's, it's too much. Some people do. It really depends on your flow of your work. But yeah. one rebuttal that I have about switching to Sony is that what, what you need to understand is if you're going to go Sony, it's a lot more expensive to go Sony than to go Canon. So let's talk about Canon now. In terms, of, it, in terms of how? So that, I'm about to get to okay. that. So if, because like, since I'm a teacher, students come to me and say, Mr. Infante, what camera should I get? I, I, I like this class, you know, I wanna buy a camera. So in about two to three years, the standard is gonna be mirrorless cameras, right? Mm -hmm. Pretty much, right? Mm -hmm. And so if I was gonna tell a student to buy a camera, I would say go with Canon because it's a lot more affordable. I'm gonna, t I'm gonna talk about the lenses that you can get with Canon. Right now, Canon, you can get a 50 millimeter came, lens. I came prepared, I came guys. prepared. I came eating Cam? pizza. So, a Canon lens, 50 millimeter that has stem, you can use it on the current mirrorless with an adapter, right? $110, right? $125. $125. And it works great. I use it with my students. Great for photos, great for video. Sony, if you're going to get a 50 millimeter, you're looking at $248 to $298. That's almost twice the price right there. Okay. Canon, I can get a 24 millimeter prime lens for $129. Sony doesn't have one of those. They have a 20 mil. That's $348. That's almost twice as much, okay? I can get a 35 mil on Canon for 299. Sony, it's at 448. Um, Canon also has the 40 millimeter at 179. These lenses, yes, they're for the older cameras, but they're adapter, it, you know it's gonna work good. I have the Sony, okay, and I'm adapting. I Think about it, guys, I have a Sony, and I have a Canon lens, and the eye autofocus works great. You're telling me when the Canon camera comes out with their adapter that a Canon lens is not going to work good. It's going to work fantastic. Yeah. So what I think Canon needs to advertise more is that they have a great lens lineup. Because when they release their Canon um, mirrorless system, they really need to show like, look at guys, our prices are really, really great. And their Canon lenses are really, really awesome. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because m with my students, the thing is they don't, they, they can't afford to spend like the A6500 cost $1,100 has great features, don't get me wrong. The uh, M50 has, it's only 600 bucks. Yes, the 4K is terrible, yada, yada, yada. But if you do 1080p, maybe you're just new into photography, it's only 600 bucks. You're just giving out on the A6000 though. Oh, okay, so my, but that, that, camera's, yeah. that camera's older though, right? It is so, older, so, yeah. So how yeah. much does that one cost then? It's around 500, six, oh. 550, 600. Oh, okay, okay, so that's good to know. Yeah, because okay. it's still an option, yeah, but, yeah. but you did no, make no, a good no, point. No, that, no, that's a, that's a, that's yeah. a valid point though. You made a good I, point about the lenses though, because that's the first thing I noticed yeah, okay. when I switched. Yeah, so one of the things that I, I forgot to say is when, when you buy a camera, where you're really gonna get good video and good photos is the lenses. The camera, the, the body is great, but if you have a, a, a body and you have just a kit lens, so you're really not gonna get the full effect. Wait, so real quick, cause somebody mentioned that, that the Canon does have the eye autofocus on the M50. Yes, it does. They do, but look at the total, look at any reviews on it. On it. It's single, the technology in the Canon, e, um, the M50 is the exact same technology. Like when it, in regards to eye autofocus, it's the same technology as Sony's A6000, which was like 2011 tech or something. Mm -hmm. So it's there, it exists, sure. But it's not something that you can have continuous. It doesn't have continuous eye to focus. It's it focuses on the eye, and then as soon as the subject or yourself move, then you lose the focus. So once it, once you start to getting into continuous eye to focus, that's where you really want to be at. So so it doesn't have continuous. So, yeah, it does not. I, I yeah, I looked into that guys. Wow, the Canon the Canon M50 does have eye to focus, but it's not continuous. And for some reason, it's a little misleading a little bit. In their oh. their um, their ad for that camera, it shows a ballerina dancing, and then they they use eye out of focus and they take one one picture. Keep that in mind, guys. It was just one picture they took, and the eye is the eye is in focus, but they weren't able to get several photos. So let's say for example, you she blinked on that picture. You don't have any more more pictures to work with. So the continuous eye out of focus is something that's really valuable. Yeah. I, I didn't so, know that. So that was yeah, great great point, Joy. Yeah. Um, I. I I'm gonna say that their full frame will have eye, uh, like continuous eye autofocus. So let's go into Canon now. We kind of yeah, talked see, about Lewis the lenses. Yeah. Um, see, I, that Lewis, one camera guy. You just mentioned said. that. 
Oh, he's in it? Yeah, he mentioned that he also tells his students to go Canon. It, it's yeah. lower budget. Canon does, it, it's so affordable and it does good video. I want to mention something real quick because I, I'm going to say the same thing, but I wanted to say like, I don't know, half a year ago or maybe a little bit older than that. I remember Canon came up with like a budget model or something like it was like two hundred, three hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or something. And, it was and like it, a pl plastic, right? Yeah, it was plastic. But I thought that was awesome because sometimes I wish these camera companies would come up with something that's kind of like a gateway to to getting um, excited about photography. Yes, and, I was going to mention that. Yeah, okay. and it, I just love that because honestly, if that if I had that option before years and years ago, then I would have taken that. I I used to be the type of or type of kid that would buy disposable cameras at Walgreens. And take pictures mm -hmm. and then go develop them but now that digital is dominating the market it's just so what you know. i was going to say about that is i think everybody's putting all their chips into the full frame like oh whoever's going to have the best is going to win the battle in my opinion i think where the chips really lie on is the lower budget mirrorless camera where for example my students they're going to take my class my photography class in a year or two from now they're going to end up buying a camera they're going to buy the camera that's most affordable to them that has the best lens lineups because they're going to be the future photographers you know for the next 10 years and so in my opinion sony needs to offer a good mirrorless thing. camera yes. right okay, yeah and then also get their prices a little bit in check so that people can you know afford some of these lenses like 300 bucks for a 50 mil lens and stuff yeah honestly, like, guys, to, to, to make up um that same point when i switched to sony i was like okay cool I'm gonna get a 50 millimeter 1.8. It's gonna be the cheap. It's gonna be the cheap lens. And I look into that, and then it's like 250, like you said before. Yeah. And then I was like, why? <laughs> I wanted like at least one cheap lens to start with. Right. So I think I think Sony should at least offer one, whatever they want, some lens that's at least 1.8 or F, even f2 would've been fine, and then just have that lens at within 150, 100 dollars range. Right. So it kind of like gives people incentive to taste the waters, test the waters, and yeah. So that was a little bit of a dis disappointment when I switched. I was like, okay, right. I'm gonna get a cheap lens. But, yeah, uh, yeah and, and with Canon, like I said, with, with those lenses, you're gonna have to adapt them <laughs> for sure. Uh, you're gonna have to buy the adapter, so keep that in mind, it's gonna be an additional 50 bucks if you go mirrorless. So mm -hmm. Canon, so let's talk about Canon now. Okay. Photo-wise, or do you, do you think they're gonna offer two cameras like Nikon's doing? Or do you think they're just gonna go one oh, camera? Is that what's happening with Nikon? Two Nike, th that's the rumors. These are just rumors. Oh, okay. That like, they, they're going to offer two models. Oh, I thought Remember? you meant like dedicated photo, one dedicated video, but you mean like no, no, no. Like I'll have different to, levels? So, what, like, yeah, different levels, like price okay. price wise. Do you think that Canon's going to offer two cameras like Nikon's going to do? Yeah. Um, I think they need to. Again, it's something that where they, like, ne let's say, for example, Nikon says, okay, I'm going to put two cameras out. Okay. Canon better have something to the same level because it's just, yeah. again, one thing with Sony. I, again, sorry guys, but it's just what I know more. <laughs> One thing with Sony that I really appreciate and like, and I know it's something that gets made fun of a lot, is that they offer a lot of camera options. So you can cho choose whatever option fit best fits your needs and then get that camera. So I think, of course, Canon does that a lot as well. They have like lots of cameras, but I think the difference between Canon's many models is that they're practically the same camera, just a little bit tweaked. Right. And I've never been a fan of that. I like I want yeah, an update to I be agree. an update. It's confusing. When I, I got the 6D Mark One in 2013, I believe the end of 2013, I was like, okay, cool. You know, I love this camera. And after like about a year or two, I was like, okay, when's the next camera coming up? When's the next version? And then it was another two years after that thought <laughs> happened. Four years later, after I got the camera, they released the 6D Mark Two, and it was hugely disappointing. That's the main. That was the main reason why I switched to Sony. I was like. So I was watching Tony and Chelsea Nortra. Their theory, and this, this might not be true, oh, yeah. their, their theory is that Canon has been purposely holding back on their technology, okay. which in a sense kind of could make sense okay. because why would you offer a 6D Mark II with 4K, uh, 1080p, 120 frames per second, and then come out with a mirrorless system and then people would be like, dude, we already got it over here. I'm okay. cool with this gear. All so right, like right. if mm -hmm. it, if they go all in and they offer all their chips into these new cameras, say that they finally offer C-Log, 4K, the whole, everything you would expect from Sony and a Canon camera, it would make sense. In theory, it okay. does make sense. Right. Now, if it's gonna happen, I don't, I don't think so, yeah. but in th that would make sense because yeah. now you, you offer this awesome mega camera, people are gonna be like, oh man, my 5D Mark IV, man, I'm gonna go near this now. Or, oh, One man. thing I wanna say real quick is that if that 6D Mark II just had I auto focus and kept the same dynamic range because if you guys do your research, true, 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 it had true. worse okay. dynamic range yeah. than the 6D Dude, Mark One. What the heck? <laughs> okay, 
Anyways, if it had that, if it had that entry level eye out of focus that the e, the M50 has, even even if it had that, I probably would have waited a little bit longer. And I'm like, okay, cool. Now it has auto focus. Maybe it would have teased me and sustained. No. So then I was like, you know, no, that it was, was a good, it was a good thing you switched to Sony, Joey. And then you got hired by Sony, man. Come on. <laughs> it's a good thing. Canon I like did. Sony. Okay. <laughs> it's a good thing Canon did that for you. They the, did you a favor. It, what you're saying is like with the, the the conspiracy that with Tony and Chelsea now is that. They held back on their technology. Yes. But in my head, I'm like, why would you do that? Because, you know, why wouldn't you just at least release it already and then just hold back on a little bit further advances in the technology? Okay, that so, you have? So, so another thing that they did mention, which I, I, okay. I thought was very interesting, mm -hmm. was the fact that they could see what Sony was going to offer. They could perfect the technology for mm -hmm. mirrorless. Okay. So they didn't have to spend as much money in kind of building up this technology. Let Sony perfect it. Now we can steal their ideas what worked, what didn't work. This is what we need to have. Let's all pack it in and save money as a business, and then now offer your mirrorless. Because I know a lot of people are still saying like, "Oh man, it's Canon and Nikon is way too late." I don't think so. Just not, not just yet. I, I just can't see like Canon like They're late. just like completely. You know what I mean? Because you know, okay, so this, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds yeah. me of. I used to be a huge gamer. It reminds me of the PlayStation Three versus Xbox. The PlayStation Three came out. It was horrible. Like. It was super expensive. They started losing all their exclusive games like Grand Theft Auto, Resident Evil. Xbox was like, yeah, we stole all your games. And I remember E3, they would be bragging and kind of throwing, that. throwing that. shade at, at, at Sony. And, and I remember they, as they a gamer. They had ads too. Yes. They're like, you want to borrow a game? This is how you do it. Because with PlayStation. Well, that, you're talking about the PS4. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm talking about. Oh, okay, so bad, I'm, no, 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 no. Right, right. I'm going to get to that. I'm going to get to that. So like what happened was. A lot of PlayStation people, PS3, ended up switching to Xbox because PlayStation 3, the, the online PlayStation network, you know, wasn't up to par to Xbox or whatever. So they lost a lot of people to Xbox. And then the next generation, when it was Xbox One versus PlayStation 4, that's when PlayStation Sony completely changed it yeah. around, going to what you were saying about the rental games. Yeah. And they completely turned it around. So I feel like this they can also be the same thing. Yeah. You, you can't just rely on like what happened in the last generation. There's still a lot like, left in this race. One thing with the, the video games, like the last thing I want to say about that, yeah. is that I remember, because I used to play games a lot, guys. I used to play Call of Duty. I know that gets made fun of, but I used to play that. Um, one thing that I remember specifically happening is that for a while, for a long time, uh, Xbox had um, these downloadable content that you could um, you can get first. Xbox got like first dibs on whatever was new coming out um, digitally. And then, um, you know, and then I stopped playing games and then um, after a while I, I heard that now PlayStation is getting the downloadable content first. So that kind of like turned gears in my head. I'm like, okay, maybe they did something right. And they made um, the people who are coming out with these games say, hey, you know, Sony, to play, oh, Sony again. But like <laughs> PlayStation, you know, maybe we want to give you dibs on the new content. So that's where I, I felt like the shift was there. I didn't experience it myself, but once they found out, I was like, okay, maybe something happened. They did something good. So we're going we're gonna to read some of the comments. He's a Canon fan. Okay, we're gonna, I, I want to read some of the comments. Did, somebody said I'm a Canon fan. I, I, oh. I shoot Sony full time. So, yeah. I, I'm just backing Canon. I just don't want to make it seem like yeah, we're guys, Canon fanboys. The reason why I, I brought we're, we're him on. We're yeah. trying to have a debate. Uh, it, I didn't want to be like, oh, it's just about Sony. Yeah, like, if it was just I me, Sony. I, if you guys didn't know, I'm, in, I'm a Sony Alpha Imaging Collective member, which is basically like their, um, their um, ambassador program for people who are just... Um, who try to do their best to help people out and share a lot, basically. I guess that's the way to describe it. Yeah. Um, so I didn't want to have a completely biased opinion of just my voice here. Right. So I invited Eli because I know that he has that good knowledge base on both sides of the of the of the yeah. spectrum. So I, yeah, that's why he's here. It's it's just a fun chat, but I know yeah. there's a lot of people that get really hurt because they want to be dominoes like, or pizza I, I shoot yeah. Canon only and I shoot Sony only. So. Okay, um, so let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. So you let's still. Do you want to look at the questions, or you want to do our canon predictions, real quick? You can start with the predictions while I look at some of the comments. Okay, so canon predictions. I say that they're gonna offer. They're gonna release a camera that's exactly on par with the 5D Mark IV in just mirrorless skeleton, basically. The 4K won't be like the legit 4K. Okay. It won't have 120p. Um, It'll have 24 frames, 30 frames per second. Um, basically, it'll be a, a 5D Mark IV, but in mirrorless. In mirrorless? I, that's what I. That's what I predict. Okay, if you predict that, what would, aside from the form factor, what would make somebody want to get that camera compared to a Sony? 
So it would probably be the small factor. Okay. Um, I'm going to hope that it has continuous eye autofocus. Okay. If it does, it and needs that, that, it. that would be awesome. It needs it. The electronic viewfinder works great. Um, because I think that that camera can work great for just like photos. Because we gotta, we got to understand that not, not everybody really cares about video. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you're right. So okay. uh, for photo-wise, I think it would be just, just perfect. The only thing that's going to suck is that they won't have enough lenses you know, for that mirrorless system. You're going to have to adapt. So it's kind of like, why would I yeah, really okay. want to switch to So my whole opinion on just, just um, that, again, I, I know it's going to come up again, um, but it's like if you have to adapt lenses, that's that, one of the main things I hear about when it comes to people that are holding back on Nikon and Canon is the fact that they'll have to adapt their lenses and you lose a performance that way. But like at the same time, if that's your excuse, like what I'm hoping for a lot of people who gave these excuses about why they didn't want to switch to Sony is that I hope these same people have that same opinion when Canon and Nikon come up with their cameras that just kind of match the Sony's, the Sony cameras. Because honestly, at that point, it's just at this point, you become just somebody who's just loyal to the brand. And mm -hmm. honestly, I, I, I'm really happy with Sony, and that's why I shoot Sony. But like, if I if I was not happy with their cameras, then I wouldn't be shooting them. Somebody mentioned, and I know they're gonna, if you're here, hi. But somebody mentioned in my last live stream that um, if Canon paid me, if they paid me, that I would be sponsored by Canon. And that is furthest from the truth, guys. I just wanted to, this is a little mini rant. Of, <laughs> I'll end it in like ten seconds. But honestly, money is not that important to me. I could be making so much money, right? I know that sounds that sounds too hardcore. But I could be making more money than I am right now if money was just the prime my prime motivation. So I don't. I honestly just wanted to get that out. You know, money is not really important to me. I could be living in a small little box with a camera and a computer just to talk to people or a phone, and I'd be happy. So. I'm not going where the money goes. I just like Sony, and that's why I use it. Right. So, yeah. Okay, so going back. Well, your prediction. Price-wise, I, I, I'll say price will probably be more than Sony. Okay. It won't be cheaper. It won't be the exact give, same Give us some numbers so that when it come out, I'll be like, look, you're wrong, or look, you're right. Okay. Or, so so right. I, I do think they're going to offer two models. They'll okay. be like a, like a, basically like a Canon 6D Mark II version, mirrorless, and then they'll be like a 5D Mark IV oh, okay. mirrorless. Oh, so, yeah. Okay. So they're going to have that. two. Um, I say that their first version will be like twenty four, twenty five hundred dollars, and then their other version will be like thirty five hundred dollars. Okay, so like a thousand yeah. jump. Um, so in other words, okay. it'll okay. be like maybe four hundred, five hundred dollars more than the A seven three, and then compared to the A seven R three, like another four hundred. But you mentioned that they, that that new camera that they have that's going to be like a mirrorless five D Mark IV. Mm -hmm. The five D Mark IV. Come back to me if I'm wrong. I can't. I don't. I don't. I'm not so knowledgeable about Canon. Like how much is the five D Mark IV? Come. I think How it's much is three thousand it? bucks. Three thousand? Right? Yeah, it's about the same price as the A seven R three. So that's okay. why I'm saying it. It's I thought it was four thousand for some reason, and I was like, okay, if if that camera comes out, then it has to at least be the same price. So that makes sense to me. If it's like a five D Mark IV but mirrorless, then it has to be at least um, a little bit more expensive. So if the five D Mark IV is three thousand, and then the mirrorless version is going to be three thousand five hundred, that would make sense to me. Yeah. So it's a little bit of jump. Um, Honestly, I think the mirrorless is so like once you guys who are really fans of like Nikon and Sony or Nikon and Canon, once you kind of finally test the you know mirrorless cameras because of your your brand is part of the the cool hip <laughs> crowd now, once you experience that, you'll see what Nikon or Can what Sony users were talking about for a while now. Yeah, yeah. So True. and I've only been shooting Sony dedicated since the beginning of 2017. Uh, when I say like February 2017. So, um, so I was recently part of the crowd, <laughs> but, but um, honestly, I'm a big fan of Sony and what they're doing. So uh, I, I, I honestly just want you guys to experience the same thing. E even if it's not part of Sony, then whatever. As long as you're seeing these features and having it in your head that these features are actually making a difference in a positive way. Yeah. So, so what do you think of the price? I already gave you my prices. All right. My price would be for the lower end model uh 2800 and Oof. and then the higher price would be 3800 damn so yeah you're saying 800 dollars more than damn yeah okay so then features wise features uh, like like photos I, I think photos i think the electronic viewfinder will be fine i think they'll have continuous idle focus idle focus i think photo wise it'll be fantastic uh, canon's always been great with photos so without okay. a doubt i know yeah. for sure photo wise it'll be good okay so when it comes to the technology involved that's where i'm kind of getting halted in my head because 
although it's you know it, we can easily say they need it to have this these break features I don't know the engineering involved I don't know what kind of um, difficulties they'll face putting these features that are in a bigger body in a smaller body so I want to say that they have to at least match these these specs off of the 5d mark 4 like you mentioned or be like so close behind like so close I don't know 3,000 I, I remember I think it was the 5d mark 4 mm -hmm. I think it was them that um, they had three and a half K for a while or something like that and then they updated it and it became 4k but it, again it was 4k with a crop factor yeah crop I could be wrong was, but I remember thinking what the hell is three and a half K <laughs> what the heck is that so I was like okay you know they're not there yet and that's their latest like their latest I wouldn't say high-end camera but like getting towards the high-end cameras because in my head the 1d 1dx mark ii and all those other cameras and c200s those are like the pro really high-end video cameras but like the that middle ground um middle to high ground with the 5d mark 4 i'm like that's like their best model of that that whole area so why does it you know why is it lacking in these features so so um i think it will be to have the same specs that you mentioned mm -hmm. but again i think that what's going to hurt it is that price range so and, and if they need eye autofocus they need it that's one feature that just makes life so much easier. It needs to be continuous. Yeah, I was gonna say it, it continues. It needs to be, and same with Nikon. Nick, you know, next thing. Oh man, you're, you're, scared, you're scaring me now because <laughs> I, I, when I mentioned the M50, I thought it was continuous. I didn't know it was just like I ought to focus. Okay. Um, okay, see. so the last thing with Canon, and then we'll get to the questions. Yeah. There's a, there's, I think there's probably like a lot of debate going yeah, on. Yeah, if you guys are part of like, I want to hear like I want to see you kind of uh, who's in the chat that you know what Canon, what camera are you using? So. If, just real quickly, if you guys want to be, be part of the conversation, use the hashtag Nikon or hashtag Canon or hashtag Sony. Or if you shoot something else that I'm, I'm excluding, yeah. you know, let me know because I want to I kind of get see how much um, users from all the camera systems are in the group, the group chat right now. Okay. So use the hashtag, hashtag Nikon, hashtag Canon, hashtag Sony so you guys can see that. Sony, Canon. So you got Canon, Canon 70, 70D. I think that has the flip the screen. Icon. Oh yeah, so I was gonna mention that. Do you think oh, flip Canon? Because Canon's the only, if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong. It's only they're the only, screen? they're only ones that have a full frame flip out screen. Okay. That could be a game changer for Canon if they were to offer that. Because you know, Sony people have been like, I want that people so are, bad. People are man. craving that. So I think that that could be one way to get people to be like, damn, I really want to get a Canon mirrorless. Do you think that Canon will do that? I think Canon will do that because they already have like. They have this, the... That's going to be a stinger, man, for Sony peeps right there, dude. You can already see that. that. Screen? <laughs> yeah. No, for me, I want Sony to get it, but maybe, like, maybe like Canon, maybe they're holding back for the <laughs> A7S III. Yeah, maybe that's, what, that's, they're a, doing that's what I was thinking, too. You know, man. if they don't have that, I already know people that, that say if the wow. Sony A7S III, if that's the camera that's coming out soon, um, has a 4K60. Uh, that's another thing. Do you think that the, those cameras are going to have 4K60? 60 frames per second? Oh, okay. Because that's something a mm -hmm. lot of nah, Sony users nah, were waiting. Nah. No? Mm -hmm. I honestly think no. No, they're not. Because, nah. and again, it'll be like the, the Canon conspiracy people, they're like, you know, they're holding back again for that another camera that's <laughs> going to come out. I'm like, okay, why don't they just release it? The, th the thing with Canon is that they, I can see why they would kind of want to hold back because they offer a lot of video cameras. And oh. They, they kind of okay, like yeah. right. degrade their C100. I think that's their video lineup. And so... I think we're done with our predictions. Let's look at the, the, the comments yeah. and then we'll kind of go from there. And then guys, I want to keep these comments and this this discussion not not anywhere where there's an animosity. Yes. Yeah. I want it to keep it light. It's, it's a very touchy situation. Yeah, yeah, everybody's like real brand loyal. Like one guy yeah, like I, pissed, I do, I do that understand I, that there's a lot of brand loyalty <laughs> out there, guys. You thought I was a Canon fanboy. And like, apparently, he didn't watch the beginning. I, I shoot Sony now. Yeah, so. Sony, uh, <laughs> he's he should have been shooting Sony. Like he fully switched. I want to say fully, or did you still have it? The five, the Canon. Oh yeah, I'm I'm still gonna have the five D Mark III because my, okay. I'm gonna let my students use it, and I I'll use it as a as a B camera when I do so, client work. So basically, you said he's gonna give it away because it's not as good <laughs> as the Sony. I'm just kidding, guys. I'm just kidding. You're gonna piss somebody off, and they're gonna comment right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, I mean, honestly, I one thing I I, I think I mentioned before that one at one point I wanted to learn Nikon, Canon, and Sony. Because those were like the top dogs. There is Fuji, of course, and Olympus and Panasonic. 
but I didn't hear much about them. Um, even Sigma ca has cameras, but nobody really uses them. Oh man. Yeah, but um, I don't think I've ever seen anyone yeah, use Sigma. I know one guy, um, Paul Monaghan, if you're watching, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> no. um, but uh, I did want to learn all these different camera systems because I honestly, if you guys know me, not just see me at face value as a Sony guy, um, if you know me, I honestly like to help people out. So at one point I wanted to learn all these three systems so that I can get a bit, good understanding for each so that when somebody approaches me with questions, then I can give them like the best advice and, and, and you know, just so I can give you guys the best help. Um, but then of course I started shooting Sony and I was like, okay, this is a really nice camera. These are really nice, nice cameras. So then I just stuck to that, and then I was approached by Sony, and it just gave me that extra oomph to, to stick to to one lane to Sony. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, again, guys, um, this is a very touchy subject. So try to keep that in mind that we're not here to hate on anything. We right. do. I do. You know, there was a point where I would just poke fun at at Canon, and you know, my friends Roland and Eli both shot Canon, and they would poke fun at Sony. And it was completely fine. You know, we yeah, weren't yeah. we're at each other's throats, okay? You know, it's just fun. I, I saw some of the comments and some people were right. Like, the camera's just a tool and I yeah, completely I, agree with that. Like, I've totally been shooting agree. Sony for the past month or two and you'll never see me, like, brag about it or say, like, uh, say Canon sucks or... He comes out with the 10 reasons why I switched to Sony <laughs> I, uh, next, <laughs> next week. <laughs> Tonight, right after this gets uploaded. <laughs> nah, but I mean, I'm basically forced to shoot Canon still because my, my students, I mean, that's what we can afford as a teacher, like with my students, you know, Canon is, is, is what we, we're going to have to use and it works great, you know, for that. Mm -hmm. I think somebody in the comment section mentioned that Canon has continuous eye out of focus. I honestly d believe they don't. I could be wrong, but I... I I want to think whatever remember that that they have continuous eye out of focus, but I could be wrong. But I honestly think that um, that's incorrect. So um, let's see. If you guys have any thoughts, let them be known. But also keep it civil. We don't want to have to remove you from the comment section. But um, for those of you guys who are asking, this is Domino's. It's fifty percent off right now. I'm not being sponsored by them. I never got a pizza. And he by never the got way. He's yeah. on a diet. Okay, that's why I'm eating. He's not. <laughs> He's on keto. Let's see. I've tried Sony for video. The footage looks like what an Android would look. Would think it looks good. AK not good. What? 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 I've tried Sony. Oh. Uh, again, guys. A lot of times, it, there's a lot of user error. So, for example, if somebody said they tried Sony. For video, that's a very vague statement in be to begin with. With, with well, Sony, maybe he maybe he should clarify. Yeah, is, is it the color grading? Was it the focus? Because uh, well, at least I, now I think what he's talking about because whenever you shoot footage, well, maybe maybe he's talking about this, but whenever you shoot video on Snapchat or Instagram or or anything okay. with an Android, um, the quality is a lot worse than what it would be like on an iPhone or something. Maybe okay. he's talking about that, but. If you're gonna keep, if you're gonna make statements, let us know to the full extent what your statement is, so we can best answer it or re reply to it. Yeah, just yeah. I just want clarification. Yeah, just you know, clarify. It maybe, helps out. Maybe it was the autofocus, or maybe it was just the colors. Because I know people, a lot of people complain about the color science from Sony when it comes to portraits. The skins don't, the skin color doesn't look as good as Canon. And, and I'll agree. I, I love the Canon color science. Uh, I think it's fantastic. Uh, the Sony one, it, it, it's fine. I mean. You can you know get everything in post. I haven't had an issue with it. Yeah, we're gonna read some of the comments right now. Um, let's see. I think Canon has 4K, even 6K, and we can see in their cinema, cinema, cinema line. Yeah, we were talking but about yeah, that. they do have that in their cinema line. But that's like at like really pricey levels. Like I don't even know, like eight thousand or so, maybe six thousand, something really high in there. I, I my friend Armando, who's a YouTuber by the name of Mondo Bites on Instagram, and I think his YouTube channel. Um, but he did a video, or actually, when I went to the Sony Cano trip recently, um, he showed me footage from his Canon C200, and it was like five stops overexposed, and then he brought it down to like usable levels, and I was like, whoa, that's that's pretty crazy. So, I thought that was pretty cool. Um, I don't know, I, you know, having said that statement, I don't know a lot about like the higher end Sony cameras, like the FS7, I believe. So I kind of stick to just the photo cameras, like the, because because you know I do a lot of photo work, so. When it comes to the higher end video stuff, I'm not gonna act like I know all of the about that stuff. So I tend tend to just stick to the photo video cameras like the A7R, A7 III, and the A7 or the A9, and hopefully the A7S III maybe. So, um, okay, yeah, let's see. Yeah, 
So let's see what what have people have been saying recently. The A sixty A six thousand was the first mirrorless for me. <laughs> Thanks for Jason Lear's video. Plus, guys, carrying around this one DX two gets your arms jacked up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it's a million. That it's a million pounds. The, That's true. The man. Was the Canyon you can, like work out and get some the one DX? Back. Yeah. Well, actually, I think it was Peter Peter McKinnon that used that camera. He had like. It was like a long battery, right? Is yeah, that the one? That's, the, that's the camera he uses for his vlogs. Also, um, yeah, Maddie, I told see, you that. that's what they okay. use. They use the, the, the 1DX Mark II. I'll say you one thing. Ooh. That, like, whenever I use a, cer a certain camera or something, I try to act like people who are going to be using the, the camera that I'm talking to are not the biggest and buffest. You know, I, I'm not as strong as I look, <laughs> you know. But um, I try to keep my opinions very much in mindset. Like, if, like, um... Somebody who was just not buff, you know, was going to use the camera. Because I do hear people like Peter McKinnon and other people using these heavy I don't know. setups. I don't know how they vlog. And then they're like, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. And they make it seem like it's like it's not heavy. But it is heavy. If they're, like, Let's say they vlog for like a whole day, like 12 hours nonstop. Your arm's going to be tired. So just keep that in mind, you know. I like when people are, are very honest about their stuff. Like there's pros and cons of Sony. And I do plan to do a video on that sometime soon. Um, and I'm going to keep it very open and honest about, you know, my feelings about the camera. So, uh, yeah. So I like when people are very honest about those pros and cons of cameras. So I, I would not be able to, like, vlog with a huge, bulky camera. Like, yeah. Once you use the A6500 and see how small and light it is, it's, it's really hard to go back to, like, a heavy DSLR camera. Yeah. Yeah, like like even with the with the stabilizer that I use, which is the Zoom Crane version two, um, there's the Zoom Crane two. It's a bigger cam, uh, bigger stabilizer that can hold a lot of a lot more weight. But I don't need all of that crane. I don't need that much. Uh, and I know that for a fact that if I were to use it and get, I'd get tired. So I'm not gonna use that and get that, even though it does have like more more uh, weight that it can handle. So yeah, you just have to be realistic about what you can do, what you can handle, and what you can't. So, keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. Let's see, are you guys paid or sponsored by Sony Godox? No, me, me absolutely not. No, I'm not paid by. I, one thing, what could the, one real quick thing that I want to mention is that if we were sponsored, if I was sponsored by Domino's or Pepsi or Sony, I'd have to tell you guys. It's like by law, I would have to tell you. So, yeah. I agree with both of you. Ease of use for new new guys. Canon is, is better, better alternative. Mm -hmm. Sony will make you think and work, but the end results are much better than all the other. Yeah, I agree. See, I definitely agree with I that agree as that. well. Um, mm -hmm. There was that little bit of learning curve, but once I got over it, then because it wasn't. Like, I'm trying to think about how my my experience with Sony when I first started with it, and it was a little bit like, dang, I want to just learn it already. I want it to. I want to already know everything about this camera. So then I had that learning curve. But once I went over it and I learned these these menu systems and everything, then I was like, okay, cool. I feel so much better. I can tackle on any portrait shoot. And um, yeah, it's honestly just a better camera in my opinion. But I'm really looking forward to whatever Canon and Nikon come up with. Because one thing you guys cannot deny is that competition is always going to be good for the consumer. Yes, I agree. So if Canon makes a great camera or Nikon makes a great camera, then that's just going to that's just going to make Sony work hard to get an even better camera and vice versa. Prices so will be better. So prices everything. Everything is better so, for us. And so all in all, like if there's supposed to be any sort of takeaway from this is that in the end, all of us win. If the one camera has a better or one system has a better camera, then that's going to benefit us because then it'll make the other people work hard so yeah, and exactly, the prices would go it's, like, it's exactly what's happening right now yeah. Sony's doing good with the mirrorless now Nikon and Canon are finally releasing I'm so their... curious about the prices though I'm so curious because you know what the, you know, I'm just like, wondering what the we hell. should have people comment and predict and see who who got it the closest with the I'm pricing. not a Sony artisan I'm a Sony Alpha Imaging Collective member there's a difference it's not worth mentioning but it's there's a difference artisans are like a step up so I mean, I would love to be 170, but... Uh, okay. Um, let's see. If you have a workshop... Okay, I do ha plan to do a couple of workshops, guys. So if you guys live in Texas, you guys will be experiencing those workshops soon because I do plan to do them sometime soon. I just... I'm just... It's been raining a little bit, so that sucks. The weather's so. been all over the place. Yeah. I wasn't even expecting it to rain today. Yeah, I did. So that's crazy. All right, you guys. I have Sony Envy. 
Okay, well, actually, that's a good mm-hmm. statement to have because what what are you wanting Canon to have that Sony has? What is making you envious um, being a Canon user that's looking at Sony? And in that kind of question, I would ask other people, like, what are you... Like, if you shoot Canon or Nikon, for example, and you know that Sony is there and you know some of the features, why aren't you switching to Sony? I know that's a little bit of a forced question. It's a bit of a loaded question. I didn't, I didn't mean to intend it to be that way. But why would you stick with a company that's not as innovating as another company, for example? Um, of course, um, if you're happy with what you're, what you're shooting with right now, then that's a totally valid answer. But I'm just kind of curious myself because for me, I was just disappointed in Canon, what they're doing, and so I switched to Sony. And it was just easier for me to switch to Sony because of the, the, the ability to adapt the lens. Um, Nikon, I believe if there was an easier adapter like Canon had, or like Sony had for Canon, um, then a lot of people would be shooting Sony that used to be shooting Nikon. So, yeah. I own too many Canon lenses version 1 L lenses. Nikon mirrorless 3K adapter included so no new lenses to buy. So with, like saying that the new camera needs to have the adapter included? Well, he, I think he's predicting it's going to be 3000 with the adapter included oh. so that you don't have to buy any new lenses. But the thing is... is oh, that'd be interesting that they, they, they include an adapter. They, sh- they, they need to. I'm just thinking like maybe as in a business standpoint they would make a fifty dollar adapter and just well, that's what keep Canon's it. currently yeah. offering right now. So it's just like instead of including it in it being free, they'd just have a lower price, and mm-hmm. it's, it still would have been free, but then you're just charging a little. But the thing is, I think a lot of people are gonna end up. Obviously, Canon and Nikon are not gonna release like ten lenses to go along with their mirrorless yeah. uh, lineup. Um, they're gonna probably release like three. They probably have like a fifteen, yeah, it's a twenty-four right? to seventy. And probably maybe just those two lenses to start off. It, I'll be interested to see if Sigma will like immediately start the, oh, like going into its I camera. Never, see, I never even thought about that because if you guys don't know about the lens world right now, Sigma started making E-mounts, which is Sony's mount for their mirrorless system. Um, they started making E-mount versions of their lenses, and Sigma makes great lenses. So I'm actually getting their 105 1.4 very soon. Uh, once it comes out for Sony, because it's already out for Nikon and Canon, I believe. Um, but I'm getting that lens. I am going to review it soon. But I didn't even think about that, that they would like say, hey, you know, we're going to start making dedicated lenses for Nikon and Canon's mirrorless systems. So, that's, that's interesting. Interesting because point. Because Sony, they've, I think Sigma went all in. They made every single lens you could think of. The 50, the 85, macro, 105, 135. So, so let's say, for example, this Canon X mount. Let's just call it Nikon X mount, Canon X mount for their new mount that has to come out. Right. Because they have to have, because just because of the way that it's engineered, they have to have a new mount. So you're saying like, you think both of them are going to have three, three lenses each? When they're offered, yeah, I would like say at least, at least at least two, at least two. Yeah, you know that you know for sure. Two. Every company seems to always start off with a fifty millimeter. Yeah, I think if and they then just a twenty-four had, to seventy would make yeah, them, I would say sense. if they had like a fifty, a twenty-four to seventy, and then a seventy to two hundred, I think that would be fine for people who just like shoot weddings and they use those mm-hmm. focal ranges. Then I think they'd be fine because it's going to be native performance. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just curious. Guys, I'm just honestly just curious about what's going to come out soon and excited as well. So don't just think because I'm, I'm <laughs> sponsored by Sony. or not sponsored, but I'm part of the, the Sony team. Well, well, that, that's why I was here because yeah. I, I was kind of here to kind yeah, of like guys. back up like Canon a little bit. Yeah. You know, you know kind of like I was, I was like pushing Joey's <laughs> buttons a little bit. I was like, well, what about the lenses and all this stuff? You know, like it was just supposed to be like a fun little debate. Um, Jeffrey mentioned um, autofocus would make me stay with Canon. So you see how like we were mentioning like sometimes we kind of get all... We build up all this like uh, energy for video. Some people don't really care about videos. Yeah, you're right. He just cares about eye autofocus. And so he, Jeffrey said he'll just be happy with that. And I agree with him, man. Like if you get an electronic viewfinder, you get eye autofocus, boom, he's happy and he's staying with Canon. That, but like it's coming so late. It's like why not early? Yeah, but you got to understand it's like not, not everybody has left Canon has gone to, to Sony. You know what like, I mean? and, and, and you have okay. a, like, and, and like I was telling you earlier, there's a lot of people like my students, future photographers that don't even have a camera yet. They're going to end up buying, because mirrorless is going to be the standard within the next five years, pretty soon, right? Yeah. Okay, so so, somebody mentioned that the Sony battery life sucks. <laughs> not, yeah. It used to. Okay. Not, so, not anymore. Okay, well, 
just to clarify, he is or he or she is right if you're talking about like the A6500. Yeah. So to clarify, yes. Yeah, their their newest cameras, yes, the, A7, so the A9, the A7 III, the A7R3, um, those ones use a newer battery that's called the Z battery. The older ones had a W battery. It's just different kind of battery. And um, the batteries are really, really good now. I'm actually using, what we've been recording with right now is the A7 III with the new battery. So it's not dead yet, okay? So it's good. And I think you, um, Eli actually showed me a photographer that switched from Canon to Sony. Nick Page. Yeah, Nick Page, his name is, if you're here, hey. Um, he said that he shot a wedding on a A7R three with a battery grip that had two batteries in there. And at the end, um, he thought the batteries was gonna die like towards the end of the wedding, but then it was just the one of the two batteries because the battery grips have two batteries. So then he was able to go um, finish the wedding, um, a full day wedding. He was able to finish the wedding on that second battery, but only used about 20% of that second battery. And he had somebody that was shooting with a 5D Mark IV, 5D Mark IV, I think it was. I think, mm -hmm. it, I think it was a 5D Mark IV, and mm -hmm. they had it go through four batteries. Yes, yeah, it was a 5D Mark IV. Four batteries. So if you're saying the battery sucks, then I'm just, I'll make that statement, and you can talk to Nick Page yourself. He's a YouTuber. You can watch his video, by the way. Yeah, you he, just go to Nick Page. He has yeah. like a, I think he went live and he was just talking about yeah, it. Yeah, I watched live because I was curious about that. Why, what was his reasons for shooting Sony? Now, David switched. David Flint said, the best photographers are using Canon Nikon Phase 1, not on YouTube. One of the best photographers in the world uses Nikon D5. Yeah, dude, uh, this is not like a battle of who's yeah. better. We, we, we tried to, to clarify that. This is yeah. really just a fun conversation. We're just trying to predict. Yeah. And I mean, you can, you, can get, you can get you can get good pictures with any cameraman. So you're absolutely right. Like, like Roberto Valenzuela uses Canon. Um, Jerry Guiones uses Nikon. I mean, there's so many great so photographers. Big. Yeah, if um, you if you have like, I want you guys to at least come out of this learning a little bit something. If you hear a statement or something on on a brand that you're looking into, make sure that the the information is true. Because um, I heard I heard a lot of things about Sony when I was still shooting Canon, that w that ended up being false information that I should have checked and looked into myself that kind of prevented my switch. So um, so yeah, just, just do, your, do your research on the cameras that you're using and the cameras that you might want to use so you guys can make the, the best decision for whatever you shoot. So, um, I missed the deal on the A6500. Oh yeah, the, the A6500 A6 went on sale not too long ago. Go up a little bit, dude. Somebody, I think see. somebody had a thing right there. It says both camera brands. I use one DX. Yeah. So if you guys Seven shoot hybrid, camera. you know, more power to you. Yeah. You know, there's nothing wrong with shooting one camera or another. Actually, you know what? What's yeah, crazy I'm is that I, I might actually buy the new Canon mirrorless uh, if it's good. I wouldn't mind shooting both because I have the A6500, I have the A7 III. All the glass that I That'd have is interesting. All the glass I have is for Canon, and so if. Canon comes out with a good camera, hey, why not? You know what I forgot to mention, because you mentioned how about how expensive Sony lenses are. The the good thing about Sony lenses is that, okay guys, I'll be completely honest with you, whenever I shot manually using the Canon 6D, I sucked at it. Like, I was horrible at it. And the very first time that I shot Sony using a manual focus lens, it was a, a world difference. It was seriously a world difference, and I could focus a lot better. Um, when this, when I got the Sigma R85 for Canon and I adapted it to my Sony uh, A7R2, the the autofocus performance wasn't quite there yet where I wanted it to be. So there was some times where I'll manually focus, and you can actually see in some of my YouTube videos where I do that focus and recompose thing, mm -hmm. and then um, I manually focused, and I was able to do that. I, in two videos that I can recall right now. The one with um, my very first photo shoot with the A7R2, which was, I believe, in <laughs> February with Clarissa wearing a green top. Um, I am I manually focused in that lens, or that video. And then there's another video that I shot with my friend and model, Erica, um, where she's using, where she's shooting, um, wearing a white top. And it was the Evolve, the Evolve 200 video. Um, yeah, that, that video. Uh, I fo manually focused in that, uh, that video. So mm -hmm. it's possible to manually focus. I'm not saying that, you know, just because you can adapt lens and manually focus, that, that that's not going to be something that's ideal to you, but it, that option is there. So. Mario says, I think people just want you to go down the rabbit hole and just start an all-out <laughs> brand war. I guarantee you, you will get more followers. <laughs> Laugh out loud. No. Yeah, I know. Yeah. No, no, people no. always love drama. I am not yeah. part of that crowd. I it's just, just 
it just sucks because I'm very interested to see what happens and what, what the different camera, camera companies are going to release. So if I talk about it, of course, people are going to get sensitive and be like, right, my yeah. camera is better than well, your we, camera. We didn't, we didn't see all the comments because we, we, me and you kind of ranted yeah, a long time. Sorry I'm kind that, of afraid guys. to go check out those earlier comments because I guarantee you people are probably like, oh my gosh. Because like one guy was already calling me out, calling me a Canon yeah, fanboy. Yeah, they're like, oh, you suck. <laughs> yeah. I'm a Canon fanboy and I'm like, yeah, I but, shoot um, I do want to uh, keep this video <laughs> within an hour and a half. Yeah. But if you guys have any questions yeah. at all, use the hashtag, hashtag QA and then ask me whatever you want. Ask Eli whatever you want so we can answer your questions. But um, like I said, guys, I'm really excited. And you guys should be excited too about whatever camera comes out because, um, again, we're, we're the ones that are going to win. Not just me because I'm shooting Sony, not just him because he's shooting Canon, but all of us. Canon, Nikon, Sony, Fuji Olympus, Sigma. Ooh, I've heard good things from Olympus. Yeah. I've heard good yeah. things from Olympus. You know what? Um, Gavin Holy shoots. I think he's an Olympus. Yeah, he's, a, yeah, he's an Olympus guy. Yeah. I didn't know and that. And Joe Edelman is Olympus. Yeah. I, I'm curious to play around. Like me, like me, I'm a just, I like to play around with like any brand. It really doesn't matter. Ooh, when I went to WPPI, I played around with Fuji and I was like, oh, this is freaking cool. Yeah. I think it was Fuji or... Well, I, I, I tried like before... Like in 2016, I think I tried the at the WPPI. I was like, oh, cool. But I didn't like the dedicated ISO, ISO dial. I did not like that at all. I still don't. Because I want to be able to adjust certain buttons if I need to. To kind of even keep it open to customization. So if there's a dedicated ISO button, I don't want it to be there. I want it to be something I can customize. Um, oh, before I forget, because there's also Leica shooters. You Ooh, guys are here. Because I think it was a Mark Wallace. When I met him recently in the Inspire event in Adorama, he had a Leica on him, and it was insane how small the lens was. It was like this big, and it was a 31.2 or something like that. Oh, man. And he was like, this lens was like $3,000 $3, or 5000 or something like that. And I was like, what the heck? But honestly, that lens was so teeny. But he made a great point about that system, which kind of, if somebody knows how much Leica cameras are, then that sucks. But he said whenever he goes somewhere, like, like a third world country or somewhere overseas that the most likely people who would steal or whatever they'll see it and think it's a toy and not steal it so um but if they do know that a leica the leica brand then they'll steal it and make a lot of money because okay. those things are pricey so um, we got but, two questions okay. first question do you guys ever oops i'm like close to the mic sorry guys if i'm loud do you guys ever sell your old stuff Absolutely. So um, I'll be honest. If you guys were to be in here in this room, I have like I'm like gearing or hoarding a lot of gear. But um, the one thing I did sell, I've sold a couple of things was my Canon equipment. I sold my two Canon 60s, the Sigma Art 35, the Sigma Art 50 recently, the 85, the 135, and thankfully I started shooting. I was an early adopter of Godox lighting. Um, and if you guys are not familiar with Godox lights. They work with any camera brand as long as you have a transmitter for that camera. So I, I shot with Canon equipment, Canon lighting, Godox lights. Um, but all I needed when I switched to Sony was a Sony transmitter and I could use all my lighting. So that was really fortunate that, that I had that. If I had a lot of Canon speed lights and I shot <laughs> Sony and then I'd have to, I'd have to sell them. Um, but yeah, so Godox for the win. Godox is legit. There was another question. Um, you're would be best to answer this. They asked, if you go back up, can you go up, Joey? It's like, the, yeah. it's right there. Basically, it asked, uh, what's your Sony service experience? So, I've never so, done it, so. Oh, is the quality going up? Okay. Okay, that's good. Sorry about that, guys. It stuttered on the screen. Um, honestly, I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. I never had to use it. I, I take care of my equipment, I guess. Actually, you know what? The camera that I'm recording with this, I just dropped it hard yesterday. <laughs> that sucked. <laughs> but um, I've never had to use Sony Experience, uh, Sony 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 Pro support. But I honestly know a couple of people who are part of the Sony Pro support, and they're honestly really amazing people, and they're on the ball all the time. And from the people I know that shoot Sony and had 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 to use that Sony Pro support, I've seen that they had good um, good experiences with them. Rob Hall, Jason Vong. Um, there's a photographer by the name of Michael Anthony. He's an amazing mm -hmm. photographer. He's had to use Sony Pro support port as well. So I kind of just go based on what other people have experienced and just kind of, either, even if that's a good or a bad thing. Um, so I've never had to use them, honestly. I mean, I'm, that's a good and a bad thing. I don't want to have to break something and then like, hey, can you help me fix this? <laughs> yeah. All right, so, you want to scroll down, Joey? Because uh, yeah. there might be some questions. Let's see. 
Uh, da -da -da, I love JHGH. Recommended to me that Explore 600. Uh, what was I going to say? I, I don't think there, like, there's a photographer by the name of Muse Chan. I don't know what he's shooting, but he's an amazing photographer as well. So I know you guys, some of you guys were mentioning how amazing other, other photographers are. There's a lot of amazing photographers out there I look up to as well. Um, oh no! Did the, did this, did this cut out? Let me uh, see. You want to go check it out? Yeah. Okay. No, it's still we're it's still okay. recording. Okay. Okay. Either way, I mean we're almost <laughs> at we're like you said you wanted to end it at an hour yeah, and thirty minutes, so we got like five an minutes. Hour and a half. Yeah. So there's one more question that just showed up from Felicia Torres. Enjoy. Oh, um, I can't decide between going with Sigma or staying faith faithful to my Nikon brand. Q and A. Would you go with Sigma or stay with Nikon? I've heard great things about both. Or is it just a brand thing? So is she talking? Felicia, can you clarify? Are you talking about the, the, the camera body? Or are you talking about the lenses? I want to see the, the, the lenses. The lenses? Because nobody uses Yeah, that, that, that's what I was saying. I was so, kind of like, oh, man. I was like, with... stick with Nikon. Um, yeah. From my experience, because uh, I own the Sigma 35, the Sigma 85, um, the Sigma's fantastic. Yeah, Sigma's on the ball. They, they really got on the ball, you know, of, like previous years like maybe three or five years ago they were okay yeah but they really have stepped it up and they really they've did. done it you can see a lot of good comparison videos on youtube if you just look it up there's yeah. a lot of good videos where the sigma lenses have actually outperformed the canon and nikon so yeah well, real quick guys one thing that I, I i had heard before and i don't know if this is true or not correct me if i'm wrong but i heard that because since if you guys are familiar with sigma lenses at all sometimes you'll hear that you know um it's a kind of like a 50 50 chance thing sometimes you get a lens and it'll work really amazing and other times you get a lens and you'll need to calibrate the crap out of it and that's something i never experienced i don't know if it's just that i'm lucky or it's again there is user error that does exist um i never i had the 35 50 85 and 135 and i never had to calibrate any of them so i don't know if it's just me being lucky but um those lenses worked really great so I don't know. I lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. There was a question, and they, they, there's more for you. If you were going to make a video on how to calibrate your video for the monitor and stuff like that, for, for printing. Oh, yeah, you're right. Um, I, I have my Canon Pixma Pro 100 here. I still need to, I still need to, I still need to learn it so I can make a video on that. Let's see. All right. <laughs> Okay. Thanks for the donation and the suggestion. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay. So somebody was uh, Felicia Torres did mention that it that is it a brand thing. The brand loyalty does exist. Honestly, guys. There's a lot of people. But there's also that thing where they're invested heavily in one camera system. So for Nikon users, again, if they're heavily invested with like let's say they have like at least five lenses, that's a lot of lenses to kind of have to go through the work of selling it and to get another camera system so that kind of holds people back so um yeah so sometimes sometimes there are people that are just dedicated to the brand so you have to keep that in mind as well um just keep an open mind and whoever you watch or or follow on youtube or wherever just keep that in mind sometimes these people are fall, fall under that category where they're just kind of just dedicated to one brand mm -hmm. for me i just use what i work uh use w i use what i use because it works and I recommend it for the same reason. So I go based off personal experience. Yeah. Uh, I had the Canon 6D, the Canon 60D. Like I started with Canon. No, I started with the Nikon D60, and then I got the Canon 60D, and then I got the Canon 60. 6D. And then I wish there was a six involved with the Sony cameras. Oh, it's a 6500. But no, nah, but yeah, no D yeah. there. But but then I got the Sony a6500. So that's my. Start, what did you start with? I started off the same. Started off with the Nikon. Uh, Which one? It was an old camera. It, it was. Cool there's, 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 there's a long story to it. Basically, okay. it was a gift. Somebody gave me that camera because I couldn't afford a camera at that time. So I started off with Nikon. Then I went exactly like you into the 60D because of the video features and it had the flip out screen. So I went Canon 60D, and then I bought the 5D Mark III, and then I bought the Sony A6500, and then I bought the A7 III. And then we'll see what the next camera is. The, I would, I'm really looking forward to seeing what Sony comes out with because this guy is gonna buy it. I'll, I'll chip Wait, in. A, I'll chip in a dollar. Wait, a pizza. What? <laughs> the, the new Canon mirrorless system. Oh, if I, then I'm gonna buy it. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. I mean, yeah. I don't know. If, I mean, okay, so if I, he does I, buy it, we're gonna do a video. 
Right. The, the thing that I'm stressing out about is like, there's gonna be a new school year that's obviously gonna happen. Ah, right? I get, yeah. I get a budget. He's I, a teacher, I, guys. And, and I gotta figure out like, with the budget that I have, should I start investing my money for my students to go mirrorless now, or do I wait and just buy another DSLR? I think like for people who are really like in, uh, involved with photography, they'll do that effort of like spending a little bit more and with the mirrorless cameras coming out. But with that, what's it called? There's consumer, prosumer. Like that entry level, I think there's still gonna be a couple, like at least two or three years. No, because I was I was looking at the prices. The, the the Canon M15, it only comes out to like 750 bucks with the adapter. The Canon T6i I just bought one Wait, for my just, student. It's just the body and the adapter. Body and the adapter. No lenses. No lenses. Which I don't need any lenses because I have the lenses we can adapt. I have the 50. I have like all the kit lenses that you can get for Canon, right? Okay. Then I bought my students the Canon T6i. Okay, and mm -hmm. it costs 600 bucks. So it's only $150 more to get newer tech, to get mm -hmm. a mirrorless camera. I was already showing my students, I, I took my A7 III to school and I was showing them, hey, look guys, you can do eye autofocus. It, it has the electronic viewfinder. And they were like freaking out. They were like blown away. They're like, you know how much of a struggle it is to show students how to use <laughs> right, manual right. mode? And then they're, they're looking inside. I'm like, you guys got to meter the camera. What does that mean? And they take the picture. Sir, why is it all blurry? Why is it all dark? <laughs> with, with the electronic yeah. viewfinder, you, I, it's gonna like, as a teacher, it's gonna save some time because like it's like you never see it. You know, like eight six thousands. No, we've already talked about the, the the Sony prices, Joey. You're right. You're right. You're, okay, you're right. <laughs> and besides, I'm already invested in Canon as a school. Like all the lenses that we have, like we can adapt them. Yeah. And so I'm thinking I'm gonna I'm gonna buy an M50, and just for the fun of it, yeah, for oh, my students, oh, and have just wow. one with the adapter. And just kind of test the waters and see. Because I heard the performance when adapting is pretty good. Yeah, yeah I've, pretty I've seen good. the YouTube videos and it seems pretty good. And I mean, for what my students do, I mean, we don't need like crazy, crazy, you know, like, you know, like great focus. Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay. If anything, a lot of times we end up shooting manual focus anyways. So okay, cool. um, that's pretty we, interesting. We, I mean, we might, Joey might have like a can. We might even we'll, have, we'll we might do have an to... A6000 versus the, M <laughs> the M50, M50 video. <laughs> It'll be very interesting, guys. Because I think, was it? The the Sony A six thousand came out like, I don't know, two thousand eleven, twelve, or maybe thirteen. Could be wrong. Sorry guys, but um, I want to say no later, no um, no earlier than two thousand thirteen. So that'd be super hilarious to see that the M fifty doesn't hold out. It's not as good as the A six thousand. For yeah. for photo wise, I think if we were to do a comparison video, it would make sense to do photos because yeah, we already, we already we know, know we already yeah. know the M fifty does four K. It doesn't. It does like a real bad like four K. You know that it's not going to get the one twenty P. So for photo wise, it'll be you want to battle a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Mortal Kombat. <laughs> I know. I know. Right. Hey, dude, that should be the thumbnail, right? <laughs> that would be all right, dude, we're already up an yeah. hour and 30 minutes. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, I am going to be doing this um, podcast so, um, slash live stream every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Central Time. That's here in Texas. That's why I'm using Central Time. Um, that's like, what, 5 p.m. in L.A., West Coast. And then that's like 8 p.m. over there in, uh, yes. in uh, New York in that, mm -hmm. in that East, area. Yeah. Eastern time Eastern zone. time zone. Yeah. So, yeah, um, thank you guys for tuning in. Um, keep in mind that... You know, I am a Sony ambassador of sorts, but um, I am very open-minded to talking about different kind of mo models. So uh, I don't want you guys to depict me as like, oh, he's only going, you know, he's in the Sony lane and there's no coming back. Uh, I know I, I like to be knowledgeable a lot of different things. So yeah, and yeah. Then Eli Infante, he has a YouTube channel now. Oh, yes, yes, He yes, just yes. came out with his first YouTube video that where he used the you want to talk about it? The, yeah, the, I use the Sony a7 III with the, actually I have it here. I use the Sony a7 III with the Sigma MC11 adapter and the Canon 35 Sigma. It was a natural light photo shoot. So, and I, the, natural light. I also, I know, puro natural light, but, um, but I also kind of uh, discussed like my, my thought process, yeah. you know, so you guys can find that. If You can also find me on Instagram, Eli underscore Infante underscore. The video link is there. So if yeah, you like, I think I linked to his YouTube channel in the description of this video. So if you guys are wondering about that, then you guys can check that out there. Um, yeah, more videos to come. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah, I, 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 I just already, do one and yeah. I'm already, no, no, no. I already have another one that I recorded. I haven't started working on it yet.